So we'll come back to section 5.2 on the inverse matrix. So in the previous video, we learned how to find the inverse of a matrix. So let's go back now to the idea of canceling out a matrix A using that inverse. So remember, uh, when we look at real number equations, such as AX equals B, so for example, a quick example, uh, if I write 3X equals 7, well, how do we solve that? Well, we multiply both sides by 3 to the minus 1, or in other words, we divide both sides by 3, right? And we end up with X equals 3 to the minus 1 times 7, which most of us are simply going to write as 7 thirds, right? Uh, but what happened in the middle uh, to get from 3X equals 7 to X equals 3 inverse times 7? Well, there was this step of multiplying by the inverse on both sides. So let's do that. Let's do that right away with matrices, uh, with a matrix equation. So first of all, a couple of little quick remarks. In the, in the real number equation before, we had AX equals B, and both A and B are the constants, right? So here you could think of it the same way. These two matrices are the constant matrices. Uh, you notice they're already named A and B. If they don't have a name in your equation, then you can name them that way. And, of course, X is the unknown, I'll just write unknown matrix. So it's an equation, just like a real number equation, except that the uh, objects involved are matrices. So first step is, since we want to multiply both sides by A inverse, is uh, finding out whether A is invertible. So is A invertible? In other words, does the matrix A have an inverse? And remember, how do we check that? Well, we check that by using AD minus BC. In this case, 3 times 2 minus negative 2 times 2. So 6, uh, 6 plus 4 equals 10. And that, of course, is not 0. And therefore, A is invertible. So that's the first step. A is invertible. The second step, before we even find the inverse of A, is let's isolate X in the equation. Okay, just like we did with real number equations. And so isolating X in this case means, well, we started with AX equals B. So isolating X means multiplying both sides by A inverse times AX equals A inverse times B. Um, you notice I don't, I'm not going to even put brackets uh, on the left because we know that matrix multiplication is associative, so we can think of doing A inverse times A first, and that, of course, will give us I times X equals A inverse times B. And then, of course, that's just X equals A inverse times B. And there we have it. So we've isolated X, our matrix X, and now we're ready to solve for X. How do we solve for X? Well, we're going to have to actually find the inverse, so let me write that. So find X or solve for X. And that, of course, in this context, simply means finding A inverse. So remember, we found AD minus BC. It was 10. And so we have 1 over 10 times the matrix uh, where we interchange positions A and D. So 2 and 3 here. And we keep B and C where they are, but they change signs. So 2 minus 2. So that's A inverse times the matrix B, which is 5, 2 minus 1, 1. 5, 2 minus 1, 1. And we're now ready to multiply. Now, a tip here is resist the temptation to multiply in the 1 tenth. Carry out the matrix multiplication first, and then we'll multiply in the 1 tenth. So matrix multiplication, by now we're pretty good at that. First row, first column, 2 times 5, 10, minus 2, is 8. Then first row, second column, so 4 plus 2, 6. And then we do the same thing with uh, the second row, first column, so minus 2 times 5, negative 10 minus 3, negative 13, and finally, negative 4 plus 3 minus 1, and that's the matrix. And so I'm going to conclude, write this here as conclusion, that x equals, and here we can multiply in the 1 tenth, so 8 over 10, in other words, 4 over 5, 6 over 10, so 3 over 5, minus 13 over 10, and finally, minus 1 over 10, that's the last entry, and we've solved for the matrix x. Okay, so as it says here, we'll see more examples of matrix equations. We'll practice some more. But first, we're going to see some useful properties. As you've noticed by now, every time we define an operation, in this case, taking the inverse of a matrix, we also define properties of that operation, and that's what we're going to see in the next video.